If you are a bass fisherman, then the month of April is one of the best times of year to go out and catch fish. Today on Bass Fishing Declassified, we're going to share with you our top lures to throw in the month of April. All right, everybody, so when I think of April, for most of the country, I think of spawning bass. You know, where I live here in, in Tennessee on the TVA, April is by far the best month for being able to catch fish that are up shallow and, and actively spawning, creating those beds. And the best bait, in my opinion, for a lot of the lakes in this area, not just TVA lakes, but you know, all over the state and this region in general, is a wacky rig. Uh, a wacky rig stick bait like this right here. This is the Z-Man Zinkers. And uh, this bait right here is loaded with salt. It has a nice little shimmy as it falls down to the bottom. And fishing it weightless on a wacky rig is probably one of the most effective ways to catch fish this time of year. Um, it's just it's just one bait that I always have tied on uh, when I'm going to any of these lakes in this region when the fish are spawning. So essentially the way to fish a wacky rig during this time of year is you're not necessarily fishing it in cover, okay? Which is great because uh, the fish that are spawning aren't necessarily spawning in cover, they're spawning on the edges of cover. So things like stumps or, or rock piles or dock posts or lay downs, anything like that are definitely going to be big, um, big players this time of year. The thing about spawning bass in April is that bass love to spawn with uh, some type of cover, against some type of cover. So they like to create their bed so they don't have to protect 360 degrees. They can kind of back up against, you know, something like a stump is a perfect example and be able to protect anything in front of that. So they know they don't have to protect uh, behind them because that stump is, is kind of protecting everything. So they're just kind of uh, looking in front of it. So that's why I like to uh, to focus on things like stumps um, that are in the, that shallow water, you know, anywhere from, you know, two to, to four or five feet. That seems to be like the, the key depth zone, depending on the water clarity. Uh, lay downs are good around dock posts, especially down by the, the base of the docks where the walkways are. That's where those fish are gonna be spawning, the first few posts going out into the lake. And, uh, and the great thing about a wacky rig is you just cast it to the edge of those, those areas, you know, whether you, you know there's a bass there on the bed or not. You, you may be just cat blind casting to these different uh, visible uh, you know pieces of cover that you think that the fish are spawning around. You can skip it underneath those docks. So you can not only catch spawning fish in April with a wacky rig, but you can also catch fish that are pre-spawn, that are just about to move up, those big females, or those fish that have moved off the beds and are hanging around things like docks. And docks are just one of my favorite types of cover this time of year too. So the way that I like to fish this bait or the tackle that I, I fish this bait with is first off, the hook is really important. This right here is the Hayabusa Special Wacky Rig hook. It's the WRM 201. Uh, that's a really good hook. Awesome wide gap finesse hook. Works really good for this technique. And then uh, the leader material that I'm gonna be using, I'm using anywhere from eight to 12 pound test uh, fluorocarbon. I like to use um, uh, gold label leader material. And then I have a, a, a backing or a main line of 20 pound braid. So this is Seaguar Smackdown. And then I like to fish my, my wacky rigs on spinning gear pretty much exclusively. I use an S4000 uh, spinning reel. And then my favorite rod for this, uh, I actually have two rods that I really like. I like the 610 medium heavy versus series rod uh, and the 72 medium heavy. Um, if the set, the 72, if I'm fishing for real big fish or I'm fishing around, you know, cover that I really want to lead those fish away from that cover, I'll use a 72 because it just gives me a little bit more leverage for those fish. And then if I'm fishing more open water, not really worried about having to lead fish away from cover, I'll use a 610 because I, I think it's a really good rod to be able to, to skip around things and, and stuff like that. But anyways, the wacky rig is definitely my absolute all-time favorite April bait. Okay, guys, my favorite lure, top lure to throw in the month of April is a lure that can be thrown at lowland reservoirs, highland reservoirs, rivers, 
ponds. And so I'm going to share with you that. And it's something I've been throwing for a very, very long time. And this is mainly going to be more for my bank fishermen here, but it is a soft plastic jerk bait, also known as a fluke style bait. Right here, I have the Strike King Caffeine Shad, okay? And then I also have right here the Big Bite Baits Jerk Bait, okay? Like I said, these are just two soft plastic uh, style jerk baits, your fluke style that I like to throw. Of course, you know about the Zoom uh, Super Flukes, and there's some other good ones out there as well. Uh, but with the fluke style bait, okay, <clears throat> you're mimicking a bunch of different type of forage that the bass could eat. Of course, with these shad pattern colors, you're trying to mimic bait fish, you're mimic shad. Uh, you're also can be throwing your darker greens. You can be throwing uh, your greens and blues that can also mimic some uh, potentially a brim style fish. And during the month of April, guys, uh, bass, you know, they're in all stages of the spawn. You have your pre-spawn fish, you have your fish that are up on the beds in the shallow, and then your post-spawn fish. So with that, there's a time where a lot of these bass are going to be protecting their areas that they are uh, spawning at, and, <clears throat> and, and nothing better than to go out and throw a soft plastic jerk bait. This jerk bait, the one thing I like about it, guys, is and I rig them Texas rigged with the Gamakatsu. Uh, I go the five aught size, but it's the offset shank uh, worm hook. It's not the EWG. I can throw an EWG, but I like that offset uh, round bend shank uh, style, and it's just my preference because that 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 EWG is a little bigger. And that offset one is going to be just a little, little smaller right here so those fish can get it all the way in their mouths. Uh, but with this lure, okay, it's, it's, you know, I'm not rigging it with any weights. And it's going to suspend in the water column right by their face, okay? So if they are up there shallow and it's a day that you need to fish it slower, you can give it a couple twitches, let it sit right there in front of their face, and then they'll go up and eat it. Now, there are times where I like to fish it really, really fast. I like to skip this thing all across the water. I'll throw it out there and right away start reeling it, give me some jerks of the rod, and let this thing bounce around, and they will come up and go after it, okay? Okay. Another thing about these soft plastic jerk baits is they are really good to skip, okay? So if you're fishing a pond and you see, you know, there's a dock out there on the pond, or let's say you're walking up the bank and you see some laydowns, you see an overhead tree, you can skip these right under there, okay? And one other thing with that on the skip, and let's say, let's talk about the rod, uh, the, the type of rod. Guys, I, you know, from growing up, I've caught fish on these from 6.6 six rods to 7.4 rods. If I'm in my boat, I do have a 7.4 rod that's kind of my, my frog rod, swim jig rod, you know, swim bait rod. And then I have 7.2 rods that I'll throw these on. I really don't have a fluke rod. I'll throw it on anything. But if I'm fishing on a bank, fishing on a pond, I might need a shorter rod. I have a 6.9 rod that I like to throw it at. And I'll put some I'll put some rod uh, just in, in, a link in the description below, just some different types so you can just check them out. But if I'm on the bank, I'm going to use a shorter rod because I'm not elevated up in my boat. So I'm right there on the bank. I'm not a tall guy. I'm 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 so if I have that 7'4 rod while fishing on the bank, I might, it's kind of harder for me to get uh, get the skip under because I'm a shorter guy. So I like to have that shorter rod as I'm walking up and down the bank. I, hey, another little feature if you're fishing a pond, let's say it's a clear pond, like I said, we're talking about them fish on the beds. One thing too to kind of consider is having some sunglasses, some polarized sunglasses. These are just Waterland sunglasses, guys. If you're looking uh, for a affordable polarized uh, lens, I'll put the link in the description. But guys, having a good polarized lens to see if there are beds or be able to see bass, see your type of cover, hey, it's very crucial when fishing ponds and in lakes as well. That was one thing with me as I got into my early years. I, I would go up and down these ponds, go up and down these rivers, and I could see potential uh, the, the cover and see if there's fish there. And like I said, the bass will get up there and cruise around, and so like, and, and so so it's kind of good to be able to see them and just to know what you're throwing at. Okay, guys. Hey, month of April, have you a soft style, uh, soft plastic jerk bait on like this right here, Big Bites jerk bait? Have you a fluke, the Strike King caffeine shad? Go out and catch some fish. Really quick, if you guys enjoy the content in this video and want more personalized instruction, head to our website, fishthemoment.com. Then go to the virtual lessons page. Here you can book one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons with each member of the Fish the Moment team. In these one-hour lessons, the Fish the Moment team member will break down your lake using Google Earth and a contour line map and answer any questions you have. Whether you're preparing for an upcoming fishing tournament or a fun weekend on the lake, make sure you sign up for one of these one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons so you're fully prepared to catch as many fish as possible on the water. 
Check them out at fishthemoment.com. April is here, and I don't care where you're at in the country, you probably have a really good chance of having a ton of the bass in your local lakes being up and shallow. A lot of these fish are spawning, whether you're down south or even up where I live. During the month of April, we lose our ice, generally speaking, and it only takes a week or two for those fish to get super shallow, which means they're accessible with a topwater bait. And therefore, my pick of the month for April is going to be the Berkeley Spin Rocket. This is a bait that just continues to impress me. It is definitely a double prop style bait that sits perfectly in the water, casts fantastically, and having these clear blades that spin very freely give the bait a uh, much less intimidating appearance in the water. Generally speaking, blades are metallic. They give off a lot of flash. They can reflect the sun, which can be good at times, but I find that a much less invasive spinning action by these propellers really give this a leg up over a lot of other prop cell baits. But this just has to do with the month of April. You have so many fish that are up shallow in a pre-spawn phase, a spawning phase, and a post-spawning phase that whether you're on a lowland impoundment down south, a highland impoundment in the Ozarks, or live up where I am in natural lakes and you've got a bunch of rivers with backwaters, those fish are going to be shallow. They're going to be holding tight to targets. And one of the best ways to get them to, uh, to bite is going to be with a topwater bait. Even in very cold water temperatures, I'll start throwing this as soon as I have water temps that are in that low to mid 50s range all the way up through the post-spawn period. So make sure you check out the Berkeley Spin Rocket. This thing is a fish catching machine. When it comes to the tackle that I'm going to be throwing this on, I like to go with a 7 foot medium heavy fast action rod. This is a custom built one that I use. You can see it's been worn up. I have used this rod for a long time. Caught a bunch of fish. It's the MHX MB843, a 7 foot 3 power. So it's a fast action, medium heavy, all purpose rod that works great when you're talking about fish in top waters. I've got it on 17 pound uh, Berkley trilene xl so it's a monofilament and then i've just got it paired up here this is an abu garcia revo mgx this is a faster speed gear ratio it's an 8.0 uh, 8 to 1 i believe is what it is so it's one of those things it's all about making a lot of precise casts to the target working your bait with a few twitches one of the keys to it is you want to twitch it and work it slow generally speaking you want to let it sit for a period of time a lot of times those fish will come up and swirl under it. That's when you got to get ready. When they do that, generally the next twitch or two is when they're going to explode on it. You better hold on because you'll get some vicious strikes. Hey guys, Kyle Cordiana here with Bass Fishing Declassified. Today I'm going to tell you what my favorite bait is in the month of April. And it is something I go to all the time. We're talking about pre-spawn, leading into the spawn, and then the spawn. That's kind of what's happening in the month of April. I'm talking about highland reservoirs. Um, and I'm gonna give you a few key tips, but it's this right here. It's a yum finesse worm trick worms But the yum finesse worm straight tailed worms. This is my favorite way to catch fish in April. It's my favorite bait uh, you know, these are six inch worms and Here's one out of the package uh, The yum finesse worm is a fantastic straight tail worm. Uh, it's nice and ribbed Gives it puts off some extra vibration in the water. It's got this nice flat side here so it can help you with rigging, understand where you want to put the hook. And what I love to throw that on is the lightest shaky head hook I can find. This is a 1 8 ounce trocar. This is the scorpion shaky head. I'll take it out of the pack here for you. And uh, this is on a four odd hook. So it's a really, it's a long hook, but it's not heavy, heavy duty wire. It's got a little flex to it, which I like. Uh, but it's definitely strong enough if you want to put it on a bait caster. But it's a little bitty head. It's got a nice bait keeper on it. Again, it's a four odd hook. It's going to size up on that worm really well. I'm going to rig it up for you, show you how you do it. We're out here on a lake that I don't know much about. And we're going to break down this lake, show you what areas I look for. And then we're going to try to catch one on this worm uh, if we're lucky. So before I rig it up, here's my tackle. This is a seven foot medium heavy Kistler KLX rod. This is a series one Kistler reel spinning rod. I love throwing it on a spinning rod. A lot of times you're around docks, transitions, you wanna under uh, throw it underhanded, skip it under docks. You don't have to worry about a backlash. 
Um, it's a really light head, eighth ounce head, so a spinning rod's easier to throw that lighter head on. Plus, I love the way a spinning rod makes me work uh, a shaky head. It, there's something about the way it makes you hop. It's different than a bait caster. It entices more bites to throw a shaky head on a spinning rod, in my opinion. So I'm throwing this. I've got, you're going to throw anywhere between 10 and 20 pound braided line. I'm a fan of Super Slick 8 by, uh, uh, by Power Pro, but uh, that, there's a lot of good braided lines out here. I'm putting that anywhere on an 8 to 12 pound Seaguard and Vizex fluorocarbon leader. This particular setup is 10 to 10. So I've got 10 pound Super Slick 8 Power, Power Pro, and I've got a 10 pound Seaguard and Vizex leader on this thing. Pretty simple how you rig this up. You're gonna sit here and it's it's important to look at the distance between the head and where the bait keeper is that's about how much worm you want to put on there so when you first put the hook through there you kind of get that distance from there to there and that's how much worm you want to worm on there the very first time try to center it you're going to go about the distance down that worm that matches the distance of that hook keeper or the bait keeper you're going to slide it up before you slide the worm on there you want to spin the worm around the hook to where the flat side of the yum finesse worm is going to be down towards the barb of the hook and then you're just going to slide it up over the bait keeper like that and then you use a little bit of imagination you try to picture where that hook is going to penetrate through that worm but i don't want the hook out of the worm i don't want to get hung up it's kind of a weedless application so i'm going to try to picture it about like that and i want to start the hook in i want to come out again i'm on the flat side of this yum finesse worm and I'm coming out and I'm going to keep running my finger on there until right there. It just starts to catch my finger. That's where I want it. It's going to be weedless. You can't see the hook, but right there, it's caught my finger. When you set the hook on that, it'll penetrate that fish's mouth. And there's your setup. It's that easy. So I did a little looking around. I found this cove right here, this pocket. What I'm looking for in the month of April, uh, late March, early April into late April, I'm going to start off on the primary point leading into a spawning pocket whether i'm on the main lake or main creek i'm looking at that first point going into a spawning pocket i'm looking for transitions i'm looking for uh ch transitions of rock i'm looking for rock to pea gravel i'm looking for docks i'm looking for boat ramps i'm looking for flooded bushes things like that really important in the month of april a lot of lakes if you have a drawdown you're in the winter drawdown leading into the month of april so your lake's been low and it's coming up either due to bringing it up from the winter drawdown or you're getting those april rain showers or spring showers and your water levels coming up it's really important to get out there when the water level is low pay attention to things like bushes that are just out of the water that you know are normally uh, going to be in the water those isolated bushes are going to be a great place for the fish to spawn any man-made structure that's out of the water now that's likely to be flooded pay attention to all that make some waypoints on your Lorance graphs make yourself some notes some key notes come back you'll catch some extra fish because of that the other thing i want you to tell i want you to remember is as you get further into the spawn bluegill become uh, something that the bashes can't stand getting around their beds so if you've got your green pumpkin on dip that tail in chartreuse you're going to start getting a lot more bites when you dip that tail in chartreuse as you get further into the spawn the bass have laid their eggs perch are invading them they can't stand it that little bit of chartreuse tips them off makes them angry yum has a bunch of different color selections i'm a big fan my rule of thumb is if my water clarity is a foot if i can drop that worm down and see it a foot or more i'm growing with something with green pumpkin green pumpkin purple as i get into the spawn dipping it with chartreuse um, if it's if it's pretty dingy, I can't see a foot deep. I'm going with a June bug color, um, and then they've got plum apple. They've got a lot of different colors that I really like. There's certain lakes that I've done really well on plum apple uh, in cleaner water and in dirty water. So, lots of color options out there. Hope that helps you guys catch more fish. Uh, now let's go try to catch a few using it and see if we can prove our strategies work. There we go, guys. Just like that, we caught one on the old scorpion shaky head, yum finesse worm. Check that out. Pop him off. There it is, right there. Just like we called it, green pumpkin. Again, if you got water visibility of less than a foot, I'm gonna throw June bug. But if we got anything more than a foot, green pumpkin, green pumpkin purple, and as you get closer to uh the end of april we're talking about early april now as we get closer to the end of april or if your lake's further along in the spawn 
start nipping that tail a little chartreuse, bluegill start to invade the beds, that touch of chartreuse on the tail is going to get you those few extra bites as you get further into the spawn. Uh, but uh, man, that's fun. It's that easy. We have a nice little transition bank here coming into the so main creek, main lake. We got a point here. We got a transition of rock going down the bank to gravel. We got docks, usually the first dock in, the first transition of rocks for the first point are the first places you're going to find these fish hiding. And uh, you can just kind of chase it back in the pocket as the spawn gets further along. But so just like we were talking about, pay attention to the bank, especially if you have a lake that's in the winter drawdown, water's coming up, or if you got rain coming up, if you anticipate your lake is low and gonna rise through the spawn, pay attention, get out there when it's low, pay attention. Things like this right here, see that seawall right there? You can see the normal water line up there. You can see it. And then right there, that footing right there, it is very unique. See the other footings over here? They're covered in rock. That one is covered in rock. That one is not. It creates a cool little flat space. It's gonna have about two foot of water on it. Great spot for a fish to set up during the spawn. You can see that other footing covered in rocks and the one down there is covered in rocks. So that footing right there behind me is gonna be a high percentage area to get a bite. It's unique, it's different. It offers that fish something, a little protection. So pay attention to things like that. This lake's gonna come up about four foot in the next couple weeks. So. Uh, knowing about things like that, making a mark, making notes, uh, notes on your lance graph about what's there, it's going to help you catch more fish. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Bass Fishing Declassified, and thanks for taking a few minutes to join us today. Much appreciated. Today we're going to be talking about my five favorite lures for April bass fishing. And, uh, you know, I think April is probably everybody's favorite month to fish because arguably it's the best month to catch bass in. Fish are shallow, they're active, they're feeding. And it's just a really good time to get out on the water. So I'm going to get, run through what my five uh, favorite lures are for the month of April. I think it might help you guys catch some good ones. First of all, let's talk about a couple soft plastics. Uh, the Zoom Centipede is one of my favorite April baits, guys. I catch a ton of fish on this. How I fish it is with a split shot rig. I take a split shot, put it up probably 12 inches above the line, a little uh, like a one-aught uh, Gamagatsu uh, hybrid worm hook on it and just fish it on a spinning rod uh, with eight pound test, Seaguar and Vezex line, dragging it in and around those secondary points. It's a really good place to catch those late pre-spawners in the month of April. Now the next bait is sort of something similar to that. This is the Zoom Zlinky, uh, sort of soft plastic stick bait. I fish this a lot of different ways in April. I'll wacky rig it just by hooking it in the middle. Um, I like to fish it on a Texas rig, maybe pitching it and flipping it around shallow docks. And I also fish it weightless on a Texas rig too. But a soft plastic stick bait, guys, in the month of April, it's hard to beat. It's probably if you could have one lure in the month of April, a soft plastic stick bait like this Zoom's Linky would be my number one choice. The third soft plastic would be a lizard. This is a Zoom eight-inch lizard, and I do like the eight-inch size. I catch bigger fish on the larger lizard. Most lizards are coming four, six, and eight inches. This is the eight-inch Zoom lizard. And I like it in black, guys. There's something about a black lizard in April I catch a lot of fish on, especially if that water visibility is under two feet. And I'm basically taking the lizard, Texas rigging it, and I pitch it and flip it around whatever shallow cover is available. It could be docks, it could be shallow grass, you know, lay downs, whatever it have. But a lizard will get you bit in April. The fourth one is a Mega Bass Magdraft, guys. A Magdraft is an outstanding April lure. It's good for late pre-spawners. It's good for bass that are actually in the spawning mode or late or early post-spawners. This is one of my favorite lures to catch big fish in the month of April. Um, the mag draft, I use it in two different sizes. I use the six inch mag draft and, and the eight inch. This is the eight inch. And one of the tips I'll give you about catching fish on the mag draft in the month of April, you gotta have wind and it helps to have clouds. If you got a cloudy, windy day, especially if you have a south wind, pick up the mag draft and fish it in and around those same type of spawning areas and it'll get you some good bites. And the last one guys is a top water. This is the Mega Bass Eye Jack. This is a wake bait. Now this bait, what it does is it, go, it stays on the surface and it just goes like that and it throws out a wake behind it. It's called a wake bait. A wake bait is an excellent lure in April. And what I like to do is I get back in the spawning coves and I throw this eye jack in the middle of the coves and just fan cast everywhere out there. And those April bass, especially the ones that have not quite got ready to spawn yet, 
will come up and hit this wake bait in the middle of those coves. It's those same fish that are out there getting ready to spawn, but there's something about the eye jack that gets a lot of bites and you need some type of a calm condition. This bait works best if it's glass smooth out there, cloudy conditions. So anyway, guys, that's my top five April lures. Um, get out there if you have a chance to fish. April's the best month, best month, to, best month to catch bass in. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys later. Guys, we appreciate you watching today's video. Let us know what your favorite lure is, what your favorite tip was. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Share us once again a comment. Share the video. Give us a like. And we'll see you next time.